reach towards you, Jesus. Amen. Proverbs chapter 18, 20 and 21. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. With whose mouth? A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his own mouth. And with the increase of his lips, his own lips, shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Praise the Lord. Of all the enemies a man can have, and we have enemies whether we like it or not. And not everybody likes the way you are so joyful. Not everybody likes that you married that man or you married that woman. Not everybody likes that you have children. So we know we have enemies here and there. Apart from the main one, which is the enemy, the devil himself, who's using other people who yield themselves to the devil. Of all enemies that a man can have, the worst kind, the very worst kind, is you. Yourself. That's the worst kind of enemy you can have. How do you deal with yourself? You know why cancer is so difficult to treat? Because it is the cells, the person's cells that are fighting the person. So it's difficult. That's what makes it, that's why it's such a, a difficult thing for man anyway, not with God. The worst enemy I can have is myself. The Bible says, our Lord Jesus Christ said it. In fact, he said, a house divided in itself can't stand. It's not just talking about a marriage home. Or, no, no. You can be divided against yourself. What you are saying is different from what you are believing. You are divided against yourself. What you pray for is different from what you are acting out. You are divided against yourself. You are your own worst enemy. One day, Daddy Gio, during the minister's conference, said to us, the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Then he said, do you realize that it ends with a question mark? And there was no answer to that question. And I looked, it's true. The Bible did not answer it. He said, you answer it. Because the answer is, I can be against myself. If God is for me and I'm against myself, there's nothing God can do. You can't help somebody who doesn't want to be helped. And the truth is, the enemy has seen that this is a weakness. If I can get you to fight yourself, I don't need to fight you again. If I can get my enemy to fight themselves, my battle is won. I just fold my hand, cross my legs, and be drinking chapman, and watch them fight themselves. And so, the devil knows that if he can get us to be our worst enemies, get me to be my own enemy, he doesn't need to pursue me around anymore. He doesn't need to chase me again. He doesn't need to go and fro, seeking who to devour. The person is already devouring himself. So there's no need to seek him. Just let him be. And you will not believe that the truth is many of us children of God were our own enemies. Listen to what the Bible is saying here. He says a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his own mouth. In other words, what I am eating is what I speak. What I am harvesting today is words that I spoke yesterday. The life I am living today is determined by what I spoke yesterday. Not the devil. Not what my mother spoke. Not what my father spoke. No. What I spoke yesterday. A man's belly with the fruit of his own. He didn't say with the fruit of the parent's mouth. No. In other words, my parents can call me an idiot, an outcast, a useless boy. But if I can open my mouth and say I'm blessed. I'm the head, not the tail. If I can open my mouth, I can change everything. It's in my mouth. Then he goes on to say death and life are in whose power? The power of the tongue. I can kill or make a life with this tongue. And we don't know. And so the enemy is taking advantage of us. Maybe it's ignorance. I don't know. Maybe we really don't know. In my case, I didn't know for many years. I did not know that well what I was saying. I was only saying what is the truth. I was only saying it like it is. So I didn't think that meant anything. So in my case then, it was ignorance. 
For some, they know. But they don't care. They don't care. That's Old Testament talk. That's rubbish. Just being over spiritual. They just don't care. They know. They've heard it. Like some will hear it this morning and still just continue the way they are. For some, it's just, if you know and you're not changing it, it's just foolishness. Because this is not me talking. This is the Bible saying that it's in your mouth. You decide. You create your tomorrow with what you say today. Listen to our Lord Jesus in Mark chapter 11, 22 and 23. Mark 11, 22 and 23. I wish these guys would move a bit faster. But that scripture says in verse 23, he said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, that person would have what he said. In other words, Jesus was telling us that I have what I say. I have what I say. Say to yourself, I have what I say. That's what he's saying. He says, whosoever. That means it doesn't have to be pastor. Whosoever means you. It means me. It means a child. It means an adult. Whosoever. That's what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You will have what you say. In other words, my life is stirred in the direction of my tongue. The way my life moves is what I'm saying that stirs it. I had a distributor then when I was working in a pharmaceutical company. He was one of our biggest distributors. But he was very troublesome. So when I came, I did not know, but they assigned him to me. So I saw that for six months, he hadn't bought anything and he was angry with the company and just whatever. But why they gave it to me, I, I don't know. But I realized, when I go to him, and I say, ah, okay, how business? You say, our ah, business is bad. Things are terrible. Are you not seeing it in the sales in the company? He was always speaking like that, always, constantly. Even when I think he's doing well, he said, business is bad. Sometimes, is it because he's owing us that he's saying it so that we don't go and drug with him? But that was his mouth. But Many years after I left, I was driving past the area where his shop was. And I looked there. It looked desolate. I don't think I saw any car parked outside. And I didn't see people trooping in. And this was somebody who could come with 20 million naira cash to the office. Cash in big bag like this, carry it. And they will call me and say, ah, your guy don't come. You just carry everything, cash. And then they will close the counter that day, counting his money. And everybody will be hailing me. That's all it. But why? Years ago, he's been saying business is bad. Things are tough. Things are rough. America things are not going well. America business is bad. Those were his confessions. And the devil is legalistic. He will put you to the sword or put the person to the sword with the words of the same person's mouth. So he wrecked that business. My wife's folks in the, live in the U.S. And we've been trying to get them to change the way they talk. But uh, they just think these people, because you're a pastor and the pastor misses you, people are just taking everything too. And I'm sure some of you, it's, you are thinking that way. We'll call and say, how, how are you guys doing? And this is, you'll say, oh, things are really rough. You know, America, this, 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 this. And they'll complain and complain and say, the house and all that, you know, things are not going well, that business is low, this is poor, and all that. Those were their confessions. And my wife will keep telling them, don't say so, don't say so, say it's this. And I say, ah, you know, it's all right. And then they will. Last year, was it last year or so? Last year, the property that they owned, and we've been there, beautiful, massive, it's on one acre. They lost it. Repo. They came and took it back. They said they couldn't pay for a while. And they lost that problem. And they paid maybe for almost 20 years or something that they've been paying. And then suddenly they failed to pay for a period of time and they took everything back. They moved into a hotel. But they kept confessing. Kept speaking wrong. Speaking the wrong words. Things are tough. America is tough. You know, nothing is going well. Business is bad. Patients are not coming and all that and all that. And they are paying the price now. It didn't surprise me much when my wife hung up the phone that day sad and said, look, this is what these people are saying. It didn't surprise me. 
You've been saying it all this while. You are bound to harvest it soon enough. Oh, is it just a coincidence that things are like this, that you say it and it happens? Maybe it's just a coincidence. Really? Listen to what God said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. God said in Genesis 1 26, that's why he said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. And somebody was teaching one day, said what that means in our likeness is, let's make man to function like we function. Let's make man to operate like we operate. So now that take me back to how does God operate? How does God operate? If you read Genesis chapter 1 account, verses 1, 2, and 3, you will see how God operates. The Bible says, Genesis 1, 1, 2, and 3, the Bible says that darkness was upon the face of the deep. Then in the next verse, God says, light be. That's when there was light. So how does God operate? God speaks what he wants, not what he sees. But the devil has so cut our tongue that we say what we see. And we keep having what we see. Unfortunately, what we are seeing is evil. So it keeps multiplying. God saw darkness. Why didn't he come out and say, my Lord, this is so dark out here. But that's not what he said. If that was you or I, that's what we say. Man, hey. Oh boy, see darkness all over the place. That's what we would have said. But he said, light be. That's when light came. That's how God operates. That's how you and I ought to operate. That's how we were created to operate. Say what you want, not what you see. Praise the Lord. What are you supposed to say? Not what you see. Joel chapter 3 verse 10. Joel 3 10. The latter part of it. says, let the weak say I am. He didn't say let the weak say oh man I'm so weak. He said let the weak say I'm strong. And we sing, let the poor say, I am rich. In other words, don't say what is. Say what you want to be. Not what is. Particularly if what is is not good. Say what you want to be. Look at the situation and speak differently. My words, this, this series, I'm going to teach this by the help of the Holy Spirit as Jesus starts in a series. The general title of the series is language barrier because our language is what is keeping us from what God has for us what you are saying what I'm saying is what's keeping me from what God has for me and the sub theme for this morning is mind your language so look at your neighbor and say mind your language listen to Nigerians talk you will know that we don't understand how we operate how are you doing? Man, they suffer for this land though. What is another way we answer? They are, it's not easy. God bless you. He knows you. Can you help with this? He knows you. Very tough. Very rigid. Those are, eh? We they manage. He go better. Those are the, that, that's the way we answer such greetings. All of them are reinforcing what is. They can't change what is. They can't. When I greet young men, just, ah, guys, they suffer. I say, you have further reinforced it. The suffering is going to continue. Because that's what you are saying. Some of them will go ahead and say, Nigeria, don't finish. No hope for this country. I say, well, that one is for you. <laughs> You're on your own on that one. There's nothing in this country. Oh, we are finished. We are finished. Some of them will say, We are finished. We are finished. Say, How can you be talking like this? You are finished. God is keeping you. You are finished. There's nothing God will do for you if you use your words to keep Him away. Malachi 3 13. Malachi 3 13. God said to us in Latin, Your words are stout again. Your words are not allowing me. Your words are stubborn. Your words are not changing. Your words are keeping me. So we answer greeting like this. This backache is going to kill me. 
My feet are killing me. This blood pressure will kill me one day. And somebody will call himself, I go die. I mean, how, how foolish can you be? How foolish can you be? I mean, we keep mention such things. Maybe they are retrenching in your office and you say, well, I'm likely to be the first to, to go because I know how my luck be. And true enough, the next day you show up in the office now your letter day on top. Because you said it. And the devil will go, the accuser, and say, ah, uh-uh, God, you can't stop it. He already said he's going first. So, I'm going to execute what he said. And that's the truth. Our Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 12, I think, 36. Matthew 12, 36. Maybe let me put it up. But I say unto you that every idle word that men surely speak, what did he say will happen? They will give account for it. Go to the next verse. Next verse. For by thy words thou shalt be justified or acquitted. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Not another person's word. By my own words. So the devil will say that's what you said. Jesus that's what you said. He has spoken it. He has condemned himself. She has said it. She has condemned herself. Oh this is my luck. I never win anything. And truly, you never win anything. And you say, why will God not change it? Why will he change it? You already say you never win anything. The devil is going to enforce it to ensure that you never win anything. Young men will greet themselves and say, oh boy, nothing they happen. They shake hands and say, what's up now? Ah, man, nothing they happen. And that's supposed to be greeting. Nothing they happen. Yet, you are expecting something to happen. How can you expect something to happen? Your mouth is saying, man, nothing they happen. Waiting day, man, nothing they oh. And truly, nothing go there. Bank account is empty. Pocket is empty. Wallet is empty. That's the way I'm talking. That's what I'm going to see. Nothing will day. Why? Because we just want to be conversationally correct. If there is such a thing. I just want to belong. So you say, hey, Unama, what's up? Nothing day. Nothing day. Just because so that we'll flow. Maybe that's why I don't have many friends. My wife has looked at me one day and said, you know, like I say, you get, you can, I can count all your friends in one hand. Because I can't be conversationally correct. And when you talk like that, people are not going to like you. When somebody comes and says, this Buhari government, now and I say, oh, God is blessing us, so God is doing this, the person is not going to continue that conversation. He will just stop you there and say, this one, no, no boy, you'll get her. You don't understand what they go on. Somebody greets you and says, ah, man, man, they suffer. You say, ah, man, God has been good. Oh, God, that's where the conversation ends. Nobody's going to make friends with you. Because they want people, people like a pity party. Oh, boy, now, wow, nothing, they have, man, now, wow, person, they suffer. Ah, no, be small, so if you see what I go through last week, my car, the house, because of this government, nothing. I know if you buy fuel. Oh, man, now, the same thing with me. So, we are sharing our bad news. We are discussing it, sharing it, and say, ah, so, I meet people who are also hopeless like me. So, a group of, a bunch of hopeless people gather to, to discuss a hopeless situation and then they go home hopeless because you can't finish that kind of discussion and go home excited no it's not possible by the time you finish that kind of discussion you are going home and say oh maybe that's why we're even seeing suicide as it is now because it depresses you when we keep talking like this some people will, will say well, I, do. I say which kind of confession is this which well, I do. Who put it on your head? If you will lose friends, but speak right. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, your words will either condemn you or acquit you. Justify you. I want to speak words that will acquit me, that will justify me. You know the one they are saying now, say, man, the guy don't blow. He don't blow. Mommy Bakari, you've not heard that one before. Uh, you, you've been old school. <laughs> He don't blow. That means he don't hammer. Before we used to say he don't hammer. He don't blow. He don't. But you know what blow means? He don't explode. So, how can I say I've exploded? Am I a suicide bomber? Hey, I got cylinder. I don't blow. Oh boy, with this one I go blow. And maybe more, more, soon you will start seeing them blow up. If they don't change that confession. But think about it. How come it, it's 
that it's always these negative things that come up as strengths. How come? How come? The devil has so afflicted and cornered our tongue because he knows if he can have your tongue, he will have your life. If the devil can rule your tongue, he will rule your life. It's as simple as that. So he's getting us the things that are trendy, the things that are whatever, hype, and the things that are wrong. So those are the confessions we make. Do you not, did you not read Numbers 14? Numbers 14, in verse 2. A group of people, the children of Israel, remember when they went to spy out the land? Twelve of them came back. Ten said, ah, while are they? We are finished. There's nothing. Those people have, hey, it's, we, it's better for us to die in the wilderness. And the rest of, hey, all of them, millions, said, hey, they began to cry. They started saying, we are going back to Egypt. It's better, oh, God should have allowed us die in Egypt or just die in the wilderness rather than going to die in these people's hands. Only two said, no, not so. God is giving us that. They were not speaking what they saw. They were speaking what God promised. But do you know what? When they kept saying it, well, I would have died there. We should have died there. We should have died there. In verse 28 of Numbers 14, it was as if God got tired. I say, said to Moses, well, as surely as I live, in other words, God was swearing by himself. What they have said is what will happen to them. It's as they have spoken, that's how it's going to be. I said all of them that said they would rather die here, they are all going to die here. And that's what happened. They all died, only two. Those two that said no were the ones who entered. Only two. So with their own mouth, they brought judgment on themselves. So is your mouth bringing you judgment or is it bringing you justice? What are you saying? You call your child good for nothing. Refer to your husband as that good for nothing man. Or refer to your wife as that woman is just useless. And then you are expecting her to change. But your confessions are poisoning and cursing her. How do you want that to change? Because words are seeds. As I keep saying, is going to keep growing and bearing fruit. So I can't call my wife foolish woman and then I expect her to act rational. What you keep speaking is what you will keep having. I can't call my child good for nothing or that stubborn child. You know, say that boy, they're very stubborn. No, I can't say that because the enemy is going to carry it as harvest and say, well, that's what he said. So we are going to afflict that boy with stubbornness. Oh, that boy is so sickly. That's what's going to happen. The child will be sickly. And then you keep running from pillar to post. Looking for somebody who will deliver. But your words are the problem. They are the barriers that won't let you take the promise of God. It's time to take back our tongues. Speak what is right. I was teaching my daughter recently. When, you say, when I say, how are you doing? She will say, fine daddy. I said, no, you don't say fine anymore. When I say, how are you doing? You say, blessed and highly favored. So when I get to her school to pick her, I say, how are you doing? She said, blessed and highly favored. I'll give her a high five. That that's the way to answer. I need her tongue to be right from now. I need her tongue to be corrected right now. Maybe I own because we grew up like that. It's now difficult to turn the tongue. You are so used to, we are managing. Well, things are tough, but hey, no, well, it, it will get, it go better. You know, and also we keep, it's difficult, but you have to make up your mind today. Take control of your tongue. How is business? It doesn't matter how it looks. Say wonderful. My daughter, my daughters, she got tired of me. She will call me. Maybe she hears that something didn't happen well or something in church. And she will call and say, ah, how are you doing? I'll say wonderful. She will echo it with me because she knows that that's what I'm going to say. She will say, I know you will say wonderful. I say, yeah, wonderful. Eh, but really, how are you doing? I say, I'm doing wonderfully. I say, really, wonderful. I say, but I heard, I say, but I'm doing wonderful. You won't hear me say, you're not going to catch me say, I'm managing. No, no. The days, I used to say that. Those days, I also suffered managing. God has delivered me from that. From manage, manager position. 
How are you doing? I'm flourishing. I'm blessed and highly favored. God has been good to me. God has been merciful to me. God has been wonderful to me. There's no money in the account, but God supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's what you ought to say. Stop joining the world to repeat what they say. Do not be conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. We can't conform in our tongue and then expect our case to be different. Your tongue has to be different before your case is different. So it's not about saying, oh, my case is... No, 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 no. If you are talking like them, you are going to experience what they are experiencing. I don't talk like them. I won't join you to discuss recession. I won't join you to discuss APC or discuss PDP. I'm not interested. Oh, vote, yes. Daddy said, vote, pray, collect your card, vote. We'll cast it because God expects us to honor our leaders and do that. Great, but they are not my source. Whether it's PDP or APC, God will supply my needs. Whether it's APC or whatever they call them, God will supply my needs according to his riches in glory. Not his riches in Nigeria. His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's what I believe. That's what I speak. So you get up every day, speak right. How are you doing? Say blessed and highly favored. You may have received bad news. Say blessed and highly favored. Say God is working everything for my good. Business may be looking dry. Nobody has come in to buy anything. And somebody says, ah, if you like say business dry today, you say no. Business is flourishing. They are coming in on all sides. God is bringing the best harvest today. You've got to start. I've got to keep talking right. I have a son who has been going through tough times. But you know, recently I found out that the reason was his tongue. His tongue. And my wife had said that earlier. That you have to call your son. The things he says are not right. And they are going through tough times. But if you hear him talk, he's repeating what he's going through. And he joins them to discuss government catch me there. If you want me to talk with you, let's talk my government in heaven. If you want me to talk, but if you want me to stay quiet, discuss Nigerian government, I'll be quiet. But bring up my government where I'm an ambassador from. Now you are talking. I will join you and discuss that one. Praise the Lord. Mind your high sales doing. What do you say? Wonderful, flourishing, beautiful. How is the job going? Great, glorious. God is promoting me. God is lifting me. I bless the name of the Lord. He's keeping me. That's the way you must answer. I used to tell my boss, he would check and sales will be down. And I was working as a salesperson. Then he would see me on the corridor. Before, when we see him along the corridor, if your sales is low, you duck into the nearest office so that he doesn't catch you and say, oh yeah, I make a, make a, come, 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 come. I just saw your sales. What are you doing? But when I started gaining some confidence as a child of God, I didn't follow them to dodge anymore. When he sees me on the corridor in the office, I'm walking, he's walking with my swag, Jesus swag. And he says, Emeka, I say, sir, how is sales going? I say, wonderful, sir. He said, eh. I say, yes, sir, wonderful. He will look at me as if this boy did drink. <laughs> but he will walk away because he's got nothing to say. What will you tell the one who sees sales low and is calling it wonderful? Why don't you want to tell him again? So he just leaves me. He turns away and walks away. And sure enough, he may be low that day. But believe me you, before that week runs out, I may not even know how it comes. It's people in the office that will call me and say, hey, hey boy, how you doing? This guy just come, scatter everywhere, don't buy your body, whatever. If you see your graph now, say, hey, what happened? They'll be telling me. And then they'll be calling me to heal me. I didn't do anything. I didn't go to the person. But my words sent angels, ministering angels to move. Because they move when you speak what God says. That's when they take action. And they go and corner those things and bring business to me. Can you change your words? Can you make a commitment today to mind your language from this day? Some answers should be contraband from on. Contra what? Contraband in our mouth, on our lips. We are managing. What is it? I am coping. Ego better. I'm getting by. 
I'm surviving. Buhari government. Recession. Contraband. Consider it so from today. These are contraband words. No more should it come from the mouth of anybody in Jesus' embassy. If other churches and other places, they want to talk about it, they are free. But as far as you are here in this God's covenant house of mercy, those words are contraband. Amen. Oh, I know if you travel this year, or money be as you get. What is it? Contraband. Contraband. Contraband words. No more speaking of contraband words. I'm flourishing. I am blessed and highly favored. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. Those are the words that should be coming out of your mouth. Let the people who work in your office know. When you enter and they say, oh, Madam, business is bad. You say, shh, nobody that's contraband in this place. So from tomorrow, tell them. Oh, mama, mommy, business is bad. We say, shh, contraband in this place. One of my daughters left in the morning. One morning after our divine connection. We greeted outside after the our divine connection. And she said to me, daddy, make I go hustle. And so, we, she left. I greeted her. It didn't ring a bell immediately. But after she left, the Holy Spirit said, did you just hear what she said? I said, huh? hustle. And it dawned on me. Hustle is a struggle. Gra, gra, toe and fro. You know, fight, hustle. And I said, oh my goodness. This, my daughter has just put her business in hustle mode. <laughs> so I phoned her. I said, please, you said something that you need to take back. She said, eh, hey, what? I said, you told me that you want to go and hustle. She said, eh. I said, no. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and adds no hustles. No hustles with it. No hassles with it. No struggles with it. No trouble comes with it. And so she changed it. From that day, she doesn't tell me how to go hustle anymore. I know I have some people who used to say hustlers here. But it is now contra. And we 